So good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm Sean Chapman. I'm one of the electrochemists here at Inaptor. Uh, a little bit about my background. Um, first generation American, first generation college student. So when I was going to university, I didn't exactly have uh, you know huge expectations from my parents. All my mother asked of me was that um, I work with renewable energy. Uh, so I ended up studying engineering physics because I really had absolutely no idea kind of what I was going to go into, whether or not it was renewable energy production, uh, energy storage. Um, and so I just saw physics as being the most fundamental thing to do. Uh, luckily enough, I found my would-be research advisor in my third year. Um, and she, uh, her name is Dr. Irina Zenyuk, and she basically introduced um, a PEM fuel cell research lab at our school. Um, and in my time with her, I worked with um, modeling and mostly experimental steps and testing of catalysts. Um, and with that experience, I was able to move to Berkeley Labs in the San Francisco Bay Area and continue my work. But instead of using fuel cells, it was electrochemical compression. Uh, the main difference being, so fuel, if a fuel cell is the opposite of uh, an electrolyzer, it's essentially just a hydrogen powered battery. An electrochemical compressor where you use uh, electrical current with a pretty similar setup um, to essentially um, pump hydrogen up a pressure gradient. So it's a lot more efficient than uh, mechanical compressors. Uh, it's still very much in development. Um, and, uh, and last step, I ended up here. So I've been here for two years. Um, and again, working on the AEM electrolyzers. Um, but the really cool thing about it is that all three of these systems uh, basically couple to each other. So if you saw um, in the slide with Mauro before, um, you start with electrolysis and you store the hydrogen, you can run it back through a fuel cell. Um, and so one of the main arguments from the battery guys or you know people like Elon Musk that are trying to promote batteries over fuel cells is the, the power to power efficiency is very low, but essentially all three of these systems, uh, they use the same framework. So they all have um, a solid state electrolyte. Um, most cases it's PEM, but in theory you can do everything with AEM. Um, and essentially, you know, uh, progressing one of them, uh, you can share those uh, efficiency in other systems. So even though uh, say in literature and academic literature, there's not as much work on AEM electrolyzers, but there's more on AEM fuel cells. We can actually use a lot of the work, same working principles. Um, so in terms of a robust hydrogen economy, uh, kind of working on one helps the whole trinity. So that's pretty interesting. Um, but uh, again, as Mauro touched upon earlier, uh, the, the AEM is um, a patented patented technology in our case. So we run with a dry cathode, which is novel, uh, and it allows us to essentially generate relatively dry hydrogen. Um, so the electrolyte itself, as you can see, is only on the anodic side, which is the side that produces oxygen. Um, and the membrane in between is a solid state uh, ion conductor. So in this case, it behaves like a strong base. Uh, and OH is what is passed um, from cathode to anode. Uh, the benefits of this is under our working potentials and with a high pH, you can get away with using cheaper metals. So uh, most transition metals, like you're not required to have expensive valve metals or uh, PGM group. So platinum, iridium, um, ruthenium, all of those. Um, so in terms of scaling this up, it's a lot more effective. So, I mean, the, the main issues today is that it's, uh, you know, the, the main push is for a robust hydrogen economy, but you need sadly the economics to, to work for anything else. So um, essentially we need to work with mass production um, and this is the best system for it. So the issue with uh, mature technologies, say like liquid alkaline is yes, you can use cheap materials, um, but you have issues with low current density. so low power densities. So these um, with using the same examples before you have these huge mainframes. So these megawatt systems basically take up entire buildings and complexes. And uh, in particular, if you're talking about startup and shutdown, which is something that you have to do very often with renewable energy sources, uh, that is something that you can't really do with alkaline electrolysis. So you basically turn it on and it's very good with baseline power. So say like coal or nuclear, things like that. And so 
in that case, it's not really ideal with a grid that's based off of renewable energy. Uh, the other example being PEM. Uh, so instead of the AEM in the center, it's, it conducts protons, behaves as a strong acid, and as noted before, it requires things like gold, titanium, platinum, iridium, um, and so you run into the supply chain issue. Uh, but in our case, since it's a relatively new technology, there's a lot of fine tuning that has to happen. Um, in particular, the anode and cathode, uh, there is something called a triple phase boundary. And so essentially you need water to get in, gases to come out, but not only that, but you also need to be able to transfer both electrons and hydroxide. Um, and so like the fine tuning of that interface is really, it's a lot like cooking. So, you know, if you, if you want to have a very good cake, it's great. Um, but if you have to trial and error the recipe, it takes a decent amount of time. 